Hello everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. This is 23rd lecture and today we will understand about multi-cycle path which is also a timing exception. This is a second part video. First part is already presented in lecture 21. Alright, let's get started. By definition, multi-cycle path is the one in which the data launched from one flop is allowed to be taken capture at the capture flop in the single clock cycle. Architecturally, it could be ensured in different ways. There can be many scenarios in a system on chip where we can apply multi-cycle path. Let's take one example that this is your waveform at the launch flop and let's say this is your waveform at the capture flop. So this is my launch waveform. This is my capture clock waveform and launch will be usually happening at this edge and capture happens at this edge. This is a single clock cycle path. It launches from here and get captured like this. So our test of setup will happen in the single clock cycle like this. But if it is a multi cycle path, then the scenario will be different. In the case of multi cycle path, you will have another waveform and maybe it would be like if it is a multi cycle of two, then your setup will be checked at the second cycle. So first cycle is this and the second cycle will be here. So setup will be checked at at the capture end on this edge. And if it is a multi cycle path of three cycles, then your setup will be checked at this edge. So setup at multi cycle of two is this. And if it is a multi cycle path of three clock cycles, then it will be this. So you can clearly check that this is first clock cycle. Then where we have written two, it is single the second clock cycle. And this is the third clock cycle. So here MCP multi cycle path will be 3. Let us try to understand that why multi cycle paths are implemented in the design wherever these are necessary. So what are the cases? What are the examples for that? So let us take this example here. Let us try to understand with this example that how does it work? So let's say that this is one system. Let's say the system this block is let's say A block and this block is let's say B block. And now in this block, this data is being transferred. So there are, let's say four signals, four data paths are there. One, two, three, four, four data paths are there, which are traveling from system A to system B. And let us take this hypothetical case that one of the component, this component entire is operating at 500 megahertz. And these signals are supposed to transfer these data paths are supposed to transfer the data at 500 megahertz from A to B. But let's say one of the data path is too large. So let's say let's say the data path three, this data path is too large to work at this frequency and the minimum data path this can take is at least three nanoseconds. So three nanoseconds means that this component cannot work at more than 333 megahertz. So three data path number three can maximum work at 333 megahertz or three nanoseconds. It will take minimum to achieve. So let's assume that if we ignore this path, then the rest of the system, rest of the design can attain 500 megahertz without any difficulty. One, two and four can achieve 500 megahertz without any difficulty. So we can sacrifice this path only so that rest of the components, rest of the data paths will still continue to work at 500 megahertz. In that case, we can make that particular path, this data path number three, we can make this particular path as a multi cycle path so that it will work at least at 250 megahertz by sacrificing the performance for only this path. So if we make a multi cycle path for this, so it will work at 250 megahertz because it will reduce the frequency by two if we take multi cycle path of two. And since that 250 megahertz, which is multi cycle path of two for this data path is actually lesser frequency than 333 megahertz. So it will be not a problem in implementation for this data path. Now let us take few more examples to understand where can we implement this kind of multi cycle paths. So let us take for simplicity that there is a data path involving one start point and one end point and start point receiving clock is actually different from receive receiving point end clock. So start point clock, let's say the name of the clock is let's say CLK1 and the CLK2 is the 
end point side so let's write here for reference that this is sp that is start point and this is end point side and both are operating at different clock frequencies and for simplicity let us assume that start point receiving clock is actually half in the frequency of that of end point so if your start point is operating at let's say 200 megahertz so your end point is actually working at 100 megahertz if we take this example so now we know that start point can only send the data at half the rate at the end point can receive so therefore there is no gain in running the end point at double the clock frequency so if we take the waveforms it would be something like this so let's say your start point is running at slower clock frequency so it is this and end point is actually running at higher frequency so once you send from the start point your data launches at this it will only be captured at this but this cycle is again useless so you are running the end point at double the frequencies and every second cycle is actually a waste since the data is launched only two cycles after second cycle only you will be launching this data right so your data is launched once only two cycles and we can modify the architecture such that data is received after a gap of one cycle in other words instead of single cycle data path we can afford two cycle data path in this case this will actually save the power as the data path now has two cycles to travel to the end point so less driving strength cell also can be used with which have lesser area and lesser power so if we provide multi cycle path of 2 that means your endpoint will capture the data instead of this edge it will capture the data at this edge and it will help the endpoint to toggle at this to capture the data at this edge and if we launch the data at this edge it will not capture the next edge instead it will capture the next edge so multi cycle path means you are providing the data to be captured at second edge instead of immediate edge so that will be a multi cycle of path of two but let's say if the data path is further longer and we wanted to provide multi cycle path of three that means it will capture the data at third edge instead of second edge or by default first edge so that is the case how where we need the multi cycle path we have explained here and now let's see implementation of multi cycle path how do you implement this how do you tell the circuit that you have to capture the data at this particular edge so how do we multi how do we actually implement the multi cycle path in the architecture to implement the multi cycle path in the architecture let us take the example like this so this is a multiplexer which is followed by a flop here so let's say this flop is ff name and this is a multiplexer and this mode select bit is actually an enable signal so we will write in en here for the reference this is enable signal and let's say there is some data path being driven so let's say that this is your zeroth bit and this is one first bit of your enable signal so of this multiplexer and now let's say there is a big data path here so let's draw this like this and this is connected to bit one of this multiplexer so we will write here as combo logic or we can write as data path also so this is your data which is going to this flip flop but it is gated by this multiplexer and now let us say that this output q pin and there is a d pin here and this is your clock pin so let's say the clock is here c or low c k clock and now this output is driving the feedback here to this like this so what will happen is your enable signal when it is one then your data goes to this flip flop and when it is zero the output of the flip flop gets captured here so this is the case of implementation now let's say by applying the waveform of the enable we can make the signal multi cycle here so this data path becomes multi cycle path if we control the enable signal so what happens is let's assume that if enable signal toggles every three cycles so if your enable signal is one let's say initially and it transfers the data to the flip-flop and let's say now it goes zero and again it will toggle after three cycles so the data at the end point will also toggle after three cycles hence the data launched at edge one will arrive at 
capturing flip flop after three edges that is fourth edge so if we make the multi cycle of three in the enable in this case getting a total of three cycles for the data so it will become a multi cycle path right now let's see one example of waveform here for this circuit to understand further better so if you see that enable when it is high in the next clock cycle the data will be launching whatever the data travels from this pin it will launch when enable signal gets high so when clock is high and enable is high in the next clock cycle your data will be launching and after three cycles it will check for setup because after three cycles only it will again go to this one so every three cycles we need to check so it is like first cycle is this second cycle is this and third cycle is this so we will check at this edge for setup and we will check for hold at same edge so this is how in the waveform we will check this is for the multi cycle path and that's all for today we will see other concepts of uh, timing exceptions in the further videos please like share and subscribe to the channel and please do give your feedback in the comment section it is very important for us thank you